Morning, everybody. Well, uh, it was a late night last night. One, oh my gosh, like 1 a.m. or something. But uh, we finally got the first turn done. And <clears throat> I wanted to recap a few things and sort of go over what I think happened, what might have happened, what should have happened, what could have happened, and just have a look at the game a little bit. I may dive into a little bit of detail, but more than likely, we're going to try and keep it fairly high level and sort of, uh, I guess, uh, more tactical discussion than mechanics discussion. But there are a couple of little points I wanted to cover off on. We'll we'll touch on them as we as we go because they're they're interesting little nuances. If I remember to tell you about it. All right. So the battle line, starting with uh, in the uh, uh, the west side of the map, uh, down at the Gulf of Issus. One of the first act actions that occurred for the Persians was for them to bring across their heavy cav with the view that they would then roll for momentum and try and bring across the balance of the uh, light cav. And then ideally I was going to push those through or around and start harassing this flank here while these guys kept the uh, Macedonian <coughs> cavalry occupied Thessalian, the Greek allies. And I think there's a couple here yeah, that are all Thessalians here. So... And keep in mind, uh, historically, uh, Thessalians were over on the right wing and, and Alexander moved them over here and joined, attached them. He took Philip and attached them to uh, Parmenian's forces here because he was significantly outnumbered. <coughs> and you may note, if you've played this battle before, there don't seem to be as many light cav. And that's because we moved some over to the right flank of Alex because that's where they were. And we'll... You can go watch my other video, uh, my first video on, on that, uh, to understand why why we did that. All right, <clears throat> the opening moves were all situated around Alexander to using his elite bonus, uh, elite initiative. So pressed uh, his forces up, used a MCC command, contingent command to drive up. Where is he? This dude here. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't pronounce his name because I don't have the full extension of the spelling. But Petromarchus or something like that. I think it is. I have to find the scenario to tell you who it was. But uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Protomarchus. <clears throat> Protomarchus was here. Now, as uh, so, and then he did a continuation. Uh, no, he didn't do a continuation after that because he was, you're not allowed to with the elite initiative. We had to rotate off to the next activation, and we'll come to that in a minute. But once it was his opportunity to attempt momentum, we did so and pressed into <clears throat> this rocky stream bed, which inflicts cohesion hits. Then the archers and javelin and javelin throwers that were here, they got to have their reaction fire and they put a bit of a sting on Alexander's forces. We then executed the combats and of course they all routed because that's what skirmishes do. And we even, uh, we even killed off a, a light cab unit. But the, the cost was pretty high here. Let me see if I can uh, just do this. So, this guy was at four, and when I first did this, he was at five out of six, which is pretty high, and he, he survived his uh, roll. This guy is four of eight, so you can see, pretty deadly. And this dude in here is six of eight. <laughs> right, so that was pretty uh, painful, I think, and it's going to take Alexander a couple of activations here to recover some hits on those guys, otherwise they're really not going to be very effective trying to attack this flank of, of Darius. This chap, uh, I brought up uh, the rest of these guys and took them down the slope and then up up the steep slope here into combat. Despite the losses, we still didn't knock. We rolled really badly here. Didn't knock that guy back. I was hoping to wrap that up. The final momentum, I think if he can have two, the final momentum roll, we... Uh, we got to get engaged with Memnon here. And I added Memnon because he's not originally in this scenario, but that's where he was. And given that we had moved the cavalry over here, they didn't have a, a leader to activate them or do anything with, so we, we gave them that opportunity. 
So Alexander sort of preempted his ability to do anything. They got into personal combat. Memnon was wounded, and that's going to reduce his uh, initiative rating by one. But they're in uh, they're in a bit of a sorry state. And I think I actually I think I actually in the flow of the game we got to the point where he was technically finished anyway. But we're now at the start of turn two, so he's here like this because he chose not to move in that uh, in that instance or in that turn. And then didn't do anything with these forces down here. I did move these guys back a little bit to uh, cover <coughs> cover the flank. Let's zoom out a little here. And then the primary activity, the Darius' forces kind of held steady, which makes sense because they're in a defensive position. And we took all of uh, Carteris' phalanx units and he issued, uh, issued a, uh, a line command and that's one of the things I did have a question on here was that line commands are not supposed to have gaps in them. And the way these guys are set up, I believe, I feel like technically they couldn't have executed a line command, but he can't reach everybody to move them all. So I'm wondering if there's supposed to be a, another, another leader underneath him other than the skirmish leader here. Uh, to um, the Peltus leader here to uh, to help activate all these guys because obviously if I had an MCC I could say okay activate him and that would cost me uh, let's say it was three cost me two of his five uh, individual orders so he could activate them and then he could activate uh, these individually for three and that would give the five uh, the five orders that were needed to be done. So I, I feel like there might be either something missing from uh, here that I'm not seeing or that uh, I'm making a mistake. So regardless, it seemed to make sense that he would be able to issue a, a line order or move order in this fashion and move everybody. And I moved them up and across basically. So we all went across, I think two or three hexes and then uh, did, a, did a pivot. Uh, because I want to attack into this area here so that we can support Alexander because he's going to take a while to recover those losses. I'm going to tag the Greek allies on to the end of this line so they'll rotate and join this line and really just look to make sure if this all goes hairy or bad that we've got our, our flank covered. And that's pretty much what happened for the turn. Uh, happy to take comments or whatever the case may be. I was curi curious about this line movement mechanic because the way I recall the rules and have looked at them is that <clears throat> you can't have gaps in the line when you're issuing, issuing those types of orders. But now's not the time. Let me see if I can actually just look up real quick uh, what, the, what the rule is again. I'll read it to you guys and we'll go from there. Yeah, the line composition chart, uh, rule 433, is pretty succinct. All the combat units for infantry lines or elephant lines must be of the same class type uh, listed in the, the scenarios line command eligibility chart. That's probably something I need to check. And must be either flank to flank or, but not and, front to rear facing and be adjacent. Any space, even an occupied space between the eligible units ends the line and that line may be of any length. So, you know, that really does kind of preclude that sort of movement, which is pretty interesting. Now, here's what's interesting. When we use these Macedonian contingent commanders, uh, you, you're allowed to issue line commands that don't have to uh, comply with the restrictions of 433, which is what I was just reading to you a few moments ago. Uh, it says here specifically, uh, in Rule 565, once activated, the MCC may issue a line command per 5.22, we'll check that in a second, to all the units of the same type, blah, 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 uh, or as designated in the scenario set up that are within his command range. The restrictions of 433 do not apply. The MCC may move per 436, even if he is in an enemy ZOC. An MCC cannot issue individual orders. We got that. Uh, they do not get to try for uh, momentum, obviously, because they don't have an initiative rating. Let's see. Each scenario lists which, if any, Macedonian commanders are available. Mm. Some scenarios do not use contingent commanders. Yeah, 
stacked with a unit. All right, so. Yeah, so I think, <clears throat> I think in order for Kateras to have done this, we would have had to have at least one MCC uh, here. And we don't have one, and I think that's problematic because I don't see how I can advance this line It'll be one, two, three, four, five. So he's got six units plus the two Greek allies. That's eight units with five with five orders that he could issue. Now these guys obviously are adjacent. Uh, I guess I could have moved these with individual orders and brought them closer together, but they start up spread out. So that's that's a complication that I think I'm going to just table and not worry about it. And one thing I did uh, recall now is a couple of these units move twice uh, and each for each additional movement order you receive i believe that you're going to pick up a an additional cohesion hit number one and number two in some of the earlier photographs you may have seen i had a cavalry wedge formation marker placed and what that uh, does is gives you some bonuses in combat however once I got to the river, I realized that that would be a really bad idea, and I probably wasn't going to need to be in a wedge, excuse me, uh, to take out skirmishes, so I removed that and sort of, uh, you know, undid that uh, formation activation, which, in, you know, makes really no difference whatsoever. So, all right, so that's what's going on there. We'll uh, leave things at that point and talk to you soon. Cheers.